Hey, you're back fast. So, we've learned a lot of things about triangles from our jumping frogs, right? Aren't you curious to know what more it can teach you? For instance, take a close look at the triangles in this shape now. They look different, don't they? That's because there are many different types of triangles. For instance, if all the sides of a triangle are the same length, we call it an equilateral triangle. Since it has the same sides, all its three angles are also equal. On the other hand, another type of triangle called the isosceles triangle, which has two sides which are of the same length, this means that the base angles which are opposite to the equal sides will also be equal. There is another kind of triangle in which one angle is a right angle or 90 degrees. Can you guess what it's called? You're right, it's called a right angled triangle. It's got some cool properties too. It's even got legs. No, I'm not joking. It's actually got legs. The side that is opposite to the right angle is called the hypotenuse. And the other two sides are called the legs. Did you hear the joke about the right angled triangle that tried to run away? <laughs> it just wasn't feeling right. <laughs> Did you get it? There is something even cooler about right angle triangles. If you add the square of the legs, you get a value equal to the square of the hypotenuse. This is called the Pythagoras theorem and is always true for all right angled triangles. Want me to show you how? Imagine you have a right angle triangle. If you make three squares using the three sides and calculate their area, you will realize the largest square near the hypotenuse has an area equal to the sum of the area of the other two squares. Since the area of a square is given by side squared, this clearly proves that the Pythagoras theorem is indeed right. Okay, so now that we have learned so much about triangles, does that mean we can take any three lines and join them to make a triangle? Let's test this, shall we? Here. I have a stick of length 6 cm and another stick of length 4 cm. If I place them like this, would we get a triangle? Of course not. This would just be a line. So this tells us that the third side must be greater than the difference between the other two sides. What if we move the stick like this? Would we get a triangle? Again, no. So from this, we can understand that the third side must be smaller than the sum of the other two sides. If we combine these two rules, we can see that the third side can be any length that is greater than the difference between the two sides and less than the sum of the two sides. <sighs> Hi there, froggy. The next time you make a jumping frog, watch out for those triangles. <laughs>